Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Decryption and I hope you are well. So I have this scene here where you are meeting up at a car race meetup thing and I want the ability to come and talk to some of the NPCs. So I want to program it in so narrative when I walk up to the NPCs will begin the dialogue and I can start talking to them all. So I figured what I'd do is I'd pick one of the NPCs, so let's pick this one here, and we're going to turn him from a stat from a normal blueprint of just a character to an actual NPC we can interact with using narrative. So the first step is to make sure you've actually got narrative installed. So go to edit plugins and just search for narrative and make sure it's ticked and installed. I'm using version 0.3 but this should work for any version of narrative. And the first thing I want to do is I want to create a generic NPC blueprint. So all of these will use the same. So I'm just gonna come into my content folder here and I'm gonna create a new folder called blueprints. So I'm just going to come in here, I'm gonna right click and choose blueprint class and I'm gonna set it to a type of character because this is a type of pawn that includes the ability to walk around such as my NPCs. And I'm gonna call it BP underscore NPC. And this will be my character here. So first thing I'll do is I'll come to the mesh and I'll just give it a little mesh of something I've got. So I've got Fisherman, that'll do. And you'll see he's floating. He needs to be at the correct height of the capsule, otherwise it won't work. So I'm going to drag him down till he looks right. I'm going to press Alt-K just so I can get a front view. And I'm just going to make sure he's in there nicely. And then I might need to rotate him 90 degrees as well. There we are. So it looks a bit weird in the T-pose. So I'm just going to simply give him an animation asset. And I'll just set him to breathing like so. Perfect. I can now save and compile. So that is the basic gist of an NPC. With that, I can now drag him in and he'll be whoever I want him to be, which is a start. So I'm going to delete him off. And the first thing I'm going to do is I need to give him some way of interacting with him. So I want his dialogue to begin as soon as you walk up to him. So I'm just going to simply come up into the components and I'm going to add a sphere collision like so. And I'll call this dialogue trigger. And you'll see it's quite small at the moment. So I'm going to just switch over to my scale and I'm going to increase it so it's about the size I want. And I'm going to put it in the middle of him. Uh, I'll angle it more towards the front of him so you've got more chance but you can still... yeah. I'll I'm going to angle it towards more of in front of him and I'll shrink it down a little bit because I only want you to be able to interact with him if you are at the front of him. I don't want you to be able to talk to him if you're behind him, that one doesn't make much sense. There we go, that'll do. So now I'm going to compile and save that and then I'm going to scroll down my details on the sphere and I'm going to hit be on component begin overlap like so. So this is going to trigger any time something hits this sphere, which could be anything. If we scroll up to the collision of this sphere, it's overlap all dynamic. So anything that's set to world dynamic will trigger this. And as you can see, this overlap here is ticked for quite a lot of things, meaning all of these things, including other NPCs, will trigger this. And we don't want that. So I'm going to set the collision presets to be overlap only pawn. This means only pawns, such as characters, will be able to trigger it. But that's still not enough, because that means other NPCs will be able to begin this dialogue. So what we're going to do in the event graph here is from the other actor here, I'm going to drag off and I'm just going to cast it to my third, my first person character. Here we go. And what this will do is check if the player is the one that's hit the, the sphere there. If the player hits this, then it will basically allow us to go through this exec node here. If it's not the player, it'll call failed instead, which in most cases you might not do anything with. And that's perfect. So the next step is to actually begin the dialogue here. But we need to set narrative up because I haven't done that yet. And that's really simple to do. So I'm just going to jump into my first person character. I'm going to add the narrative component like so. Keep it called narrative. And in my event begin play here, after I've done all of this, the first thing I want to do is I want to add the UI. And that's narrative done. That is set up. But I want to use narrative's UI as well because I'm not using my own. So in my event begin play, just at the end of it, I'm simply going to drag off and I'm going to type create widget like so. And in this create widget, I'm going to set it to the narrative default UI. There we go. And I'm going to just show player name. I'm going to keep that ticked because I want that ticked. The owning player will be get player controller. That just assigns it if you've got multiplayers, it assigns it to the correct one. And for the narrative component, I literally just need to give it the component that's controlling it, like so. And then from here, I just drag off. I'm going to promote mine to a variable because then it gives me the ability to change it later if I need to. And I'll call it narrative UI. And I'm just going to give it a category of UI. And this just might be I want to change some things later on it. And then just from here, I will drag off and do add to viewport, like so. Finally, I'm just going 
gonna highlight it all and just comment it. And I can compile and save. And now with that set up, we can jump back to our NPC and I can drag off from my BP first person character and I can choose begin dialogue. There we go. And you might be tempted to just drag off from here and start the dialogue straight away, but it could cause you some issues down the line. If NPCs are randomly wandering and you're in dialogue and another NPC hits you, it could potentially try to cancel the dialogue and restart it. So what a good habit I like to do is from here, I like to do get narrative component from target. And in here, I'm going to type is in dialogue like so. And this will return a true if you already are in a dialogue. So I'm going to connect up to a branch by holding B and clicking on it. And if I'm already in dialogue, so true, I'm just not going to do anything because I don't want the dialogue to be stopped. But instead, if I'm in false, that's where I'm going to drag off from narrative here and do begin dialogue like so from the false tab. This will help you prevent bugs later if NPCs walk into you and stuff like that. So it's a good practice to do it. You can also implement a priority boolean. So if a dialogue is super important, say a messenger, you can tick it and you can allow it to cancel your dialogue. So from this dialogue class, I'm just going to drag out and I'm going to do a promote to variable and I'm just going to call it dialogue and I'll tick the little eyeball. The default NPC avatar, I will just leave as self because it's the NPC and I don't want to start it from any specific ID. So we can keep it like that. That's all good. So now I can compile and save. So you will see now if I click my NPC here and if I scroll down to the default, you will see it requires some dialogue but we don't currently have any so we'll set some dialogue up so i'm going to come back to my blueprints and i'm going to right click create a new folder called dialogue and now i need a name for the guy because i name it after him so what i've decided to try and do for some fun so i'm going to use chat gpt in order to generate some dialogue for my character which i thought would be pretty cool so what i've done is into chat gpt is i've typed out my premise for my game and the context that I want him to want the AI to generate. So I've come in and said, I have a game I need some dialogue for. The game is set in modern day and the character you are talking to is an illegal racing driver who thinks he's better than everyone. So he's got a very stuck up personality. You walk up and because you are new, he starts teasing you. Can you please generate me some dialogue in the following format where he mocks the player and the player has some options to reply back. I've said thank you because robot overlords. Can you randomly pick a name for him as well? An American name for a male and a NASCAR style name. Mainly because he's wearing like NASCAR gear. And I've said the format is actor colon text. Actor 2 colon text. And there we go, chat GPT has successfully generated some dialogue. So he's named the NPC Tyler Talk Johnson, that's a very good name. And he's given us some options where we can speak to him, different dialogue between them. Pretty good, I like it. So what we can do now is I can copy Tyler Talk Johnson, his name, and I can jump back into Unreal. And what I'm going to do is create some dialogue here. So right click narrative dialogue, and I'm going to call it DB underscore, and I'm going to paste. It will error because it's put quotes around this middle name, but that's all good. And I can open it up. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come to the speakers and I'm actually just going to set his name to Tyler temporarily. And I'm going to set his note color to red. There we are. And I'm going to come into his beginning dialogue and I'm just going to empty it out. So he says nothing at start because that gives us more flexibility later. So you might be wondering why we set his name to Tyler first. And that's because chat here has named it Tyler. And it is actually built into narrative that you can paste in a format similar to this and it will automatically generate all the nodes for you to make you generate the dialogue really, really quick. So now if I just simply paste, you can see it's reused the speaker Tyler because it already existed. It's generated the text and the ID for us absolutely perfectly with all the options. So now all it is is a case for us is to plug this in. So you can see as soon as he talks, we get three options to the player. So I'm just going to connect all three of these up and I'm just going to go through and clear out the option one, option two part because we don't really need it. And then option three, like so. And then it looks like ChatGPT has just given us one reply. So no matter what you really say, it's all going to do the same thing anyway, but it still can be quite cool. You can generate as many dialogue as you want here. And I'll do the same again for the second batch of options. There we go. So I've set all the options up and organized them how I can see it be working but it does look like that chat has forgot to generate some replies for some of them so just for temporary sake i'm just gonna so what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna come back to chat gpt here and i'm gonna find the options that is not that it's not fulfilled such as option one here and say please 
So I'm going to say, please can you generate titles from dialogue for when the player says the below line and I paste it in and they will now give us some dialogue that Tyler can say. And thankfully, because we're doing it this way, they'll try to match it to Tyler's exact personality. There we go. So now we now have some dialogue. I can copy this, including his name. And when I come and paste it back in, you will see it puts everything how it should be. So one little thing here, I want to reuse all these options here. So I'm just going to select all of the dialogue previously, and I'm going to come off from the player options here, and I'm going to simply add a dialogue line for Tyler, an empty one, and I'm going to connect it in to all three player options. And then on here, I'm just going to tick compact view like so and then I can connect both of these dialogues up to it like so and then just for quick sake I'm just gonna drag this down here connect the second one up and then for these I'm just gonna make it say the same thing but you can easily go in and just make it say whatever you want like so now the final thing I'm gonna do is come back to this first dialogue and just rename it so it's the correct one and now I can officially call him his proper name in the speaker so I'll say Tyler talk Johnson like so you may have to come back through and just reassign them all to be Tyler it shouldn't take you very long the other option was to ask chat GPT in order to name them correctly which I'd probably advise doing next time but normally narrative does actually go through and rename it so that's odd there we go so you can see we now have our dialogue so if I come back over to Tyler here click him and assign the dialogue to him we should be in business let's grab this NPC as model here click that click onto the actor and I'm just gonna assign it to him he doesn't have a helmet, so we need to also get the helmet and the cool shades. So I'm going to click the hair, click the model, click the actor, and you'll see we don't currently have it. So this is a simple fix for me, so I'm just going to open it up and open up the base. And all I'm going to do is just copy the hair and the head, taking note of which parent socket they're bound to. So head, they're both bound to the head. So I can copy that, jump into my NPC, paste it under the mesh. And this top one is head and this bottom one is the hair. And they need to simply be linked up to the correct socket so it works correctly like so. So if I check it out now, you can see it's completely messed up. So let's just reassign it to 000. There we are. So I can save and compile. And now you can see we have Tyler there. And all I need to do is somehow get the helmet, which is here. So then I can click on this one, click the hair, and then click the helmet. There we go. Perfect. Now we have Tyler. He's got different shades, but that doesn't matter so much. And I'm going to drag him back here. One thing I'm going to do to try and help narrative out is I'm also going to give my NPC a tag named the exact same thing as his speaker avatar inside the inside narrative. So I'm going to grab Tyler Talk Johnson. And I'm just going to set his tag there. This will help later if you're ever jumping between multiple NPCs. So it's always good to have it there by default. So you can see now if I walk down here, he'll mock us and we'll see we can't see my player, but that's just simply because I've got a first person attribute on. If I shift F1 out and just press it, you can see my character is there. Look, And then I will just say that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll mock him. He'll mock us. Come down, mock him again, mock him again, and then he'll eventually abandon the chat. And there we go. And then we can start it again if we really want to. So the final touch I'm going to do to it is I just want the mocking to only happen once. So all I'm going to do is come in to this dialogue here. I'm going to copy the ID up here. I'm going to add a condition and the condition will be has dialogue node played. And then the node ID will be that one and I'll say not. So if we haven't played that dialogue, we can play it. Otherwise, it just won't do anything because there's nothing to do, which means I should be able to walk up, start the dialogue, skip through it all. And then if I walk off and come back again, the dialogue won't begin anymore. Perfect. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is an easy way to start narrative dialogue, install narrative and have it all set up and going. Perfect. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment and subscribe and I will see you next time.